So my name's Neil. I'm one of the financial aid counselors here. Um, so we're going to go over, uh, myself along with uh, uh, representatives from uh, student accounts uh, and then also our campus stores are going to go over some of the next um, pieces of business that's important for both students and parents to know coming up. Um, so, um, so I, again, for the sake of time, I'm probably just going to dive right in. Uh, we'll try to save some questions uh, or time for questions at the end. It depends how much I talk, so I'll try to get through these things. Um, so uh, a good place to start is letting you guys know how we communicate, um, or specifically how we're going to communicate with students um, specifically and then also parents. Um, so the main way that we communicate with students, um, financial aid and then also any of the other student services offices on campus, is going to be through uh, the student St. Thomas email. Uh, so students, if you haven't gotten the habit yet of checking that every day, now's really the time to start. Um, because that's when we're going to send you information about uh, when you need to fill out the FAFSA or if we need any more information or if you have a past due balance or things along those lines. Um, so it's really important that you're checking that each day um, because that's when you're going to hear, that's how you're going to hear from us. Uh, so just the excuse of, oh, sorry, I didn't see that email doesn't really work anymore. Um, so we need you to make sure that you're checking that each day and then parents, probably not a bad idea to check with your students uh, periodically to make sure that they're checking their email. And students, it's good if it's something that maybe you don't quite understand, maybe forward that along to parents. There's no harm in doing that so they can help you out with that. Um, but uh, it is really important that you're going to be checking uh, your email account daily. Uh, so that's how the majority of info is going to come to you. Uh, there are some things that we will send to your uh, personal home address. Um, if it's something that might need, you know, actual physical paper to, uh, to have or something that's a little bit more important, so something maybe like uh, information on next loan steps or loan paperwork that you need to complete. So there's going to be some uh, information that we do send uh, out in the mail, so it is a good idea to anytime parents, if you see something come from St. Thomas, open it up as soon as possible, read it over, uh, because it could be something that's really important for um, students' finances or other things to do with student services here. Um, other ways that we do communicate with students and parents, uh, one would be through the newsroom, which is our um, email newsletter uh, that St. Thomas has. Um, it also is everything's archived on our website under stthomas.edu slash news. Uh, so the newsroom, we will put in articles about, hey, it's time to fill out the FAFSA again for next year, or add drop uh, time is coming up, make sure that you have your finances in order, um, or the bill is going to be due soon, things like that. So there's always helpful tidbits for uh, parents and students in the newsroom, on top of just uh, day, our uh, regular information about what's going on in St. Thomas in general. Um, so it is good to make sure that you're checking the newsroom um, or going on, uh, online and looking at it online as well. Uh, occasionally, um, student uh, service offices will um, send things in your campus mailbox. So it's another good thing to get into uh, the habit of checking that. Plus, it's a really good feeling as a college student to get some paper mail um, now and then. Uh, so even though I'm a little bit older, I still remember uh, that being fun. Uh, and then also, there is a parent newsletter that parents can subscribe to as well. Um, so the easy way to get to that is just go onto our website uh, and, um, and search parent newsletter, uh, and there's a spot to uh, subscribe for that. So there's helpful tip, uh, tips that are just for uh, parents in that. Um, and it's all about uh, different things on St. Thomas uh, campus. So, uh, so those are different ways that we are going to reach out to students and parents. Uh, so make sure to just be aware of those things. Uh, so then on the flip side, um, how can uh, parents specifically communicate with our offices? Um, so that is going to be through something that we call proxy access, or that's something that you'll, uh, students will need to set up first. So the government has um, rules called FERPA rules, which protect students' privacy. So students, now that you're starting college, you are considered an adult in the eyes of the federal government, which means that you have certain uh, rights to your privacy that we're just not going to give out to you anyone, even if it is somebody that raised you for 18 years. So, uh, so you do need to actually give your parents access to information about your financial aid, about your student bill, about um, you know, uh, even things such as you have the option to give them, uh, let them call about information about your uh, transcripts or classes, et cetera. 
So, um, so you're going to want to do this. Um, one, uh, one way I always describe this to students and parents as far as a good reason to set up proxy access is that students, if you can think of any situation where you're going to need your parents' help sometime in your four years when it comes to financial aid or student accounts, that alone is a good enough reason to set up proxy access. So your parents can actually call and find out information and help you figure out uh, and work to, uh, through a solution. Parents on the flip side, uh, what I always suggest they say to your students is that if you're going to be helping pay for college, if you're going to co-sign on a loan or you're going to support them in any way, I feel like that's a fair trade-off is that they let you actually know about that information so you can pay or you can uh, uh, co-sign on a loan. So proxy ac access is really important. Um, so students, it's something that you'll want to set up even starting today. Um, so you can go to stthomas.edu slash proxy uh, and start setting that up. Uh, I do suggest uh, if you're in a two-parent household, set it up for both parents as well, because sometimes you never know who's going to be uh, calling uh, and uh, asking about those things. So proxy access is very important. Uh, and then our offices, again, won't say anything to parents without having that access. So, uh, uh, so it is very important. Um, so next uh, piece of, of business would be um, the bill itself, um, or specifically what uh, the students' uh, costs are uh, going to be for the school year. So there's still going to be some time before you get an official e-bill um, from St. Thomas. Um, bill from the business office is going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, but in the meantime, you might be anxious to start setting up an additional loan or just in general want to know what your costs are going to be uh, for the school year. So to help you with that, we have a tool online called our cost estimator. So you can go to that website, which is nice and long. Another good way to do it is just search cost estimator uh, on our search box on the website. Uh, and that'll bring you to a tool that we have uh, where you can enter in the number of credits that a student's going to take, uh, what residence hall um, student's going to live in, meal plan, all of those things. And it does all of the math for you. Um, you'll also enter in financial aid information so you can see actually what the cost um, for the family is going to be. So whether you're going to use that information to uh, look at uh, paying out of, out of pocket or savings or 529 plan, I'll talk about some of those things in a second, or setting up a loan, the cost estimator is a really good way to do that. Um, so it's, and it's also a way to do that without having to uh, connect with your financial aid counselor without having, having to set up an appointment um, or talk, you know, have a long conversation on the phone, et cetera. So it's one way for you to quickly get that information. Um, but there are some times that you will likely want to talk with your financial aid counselor. So some of those things might be if you're going to be studying abroad, especially some of you that might decide to study abroad as early as J term uh, coming up here. Um, so that's a good reason to talk to a financial aid counselor to see how that changes things. Um, unequal enrollment, so say for example, if not this year or another year, you decide to take five classes in fall and then only three classes in spring, well that's going to give you two very different costs um, per semester. So that might be a good reason to reach out to your financial aid counselor to see exactly what that's going to look like. Because if you are doing something like setting up a loan, that might result in having too much money for one semester but not enough money for another semester. So, uh, so it's good to work with a financial aid counselor in situations like that. And then just in general, things like J-term and summer enrollment, um, again, those things can uh, have different impacts on your costs and also financial aid. So it's good to reach out just to see what, how those things will change things. Uh, and that's what uh, we as financial aid uh, counselors are there for, is to help you navigate these things. Uh, but again, just as far as a typical year of taking four classes a semester, living on campus, the cost estimator can get you that information very quickly. So I definitely encourage you to do that. Uh, and if you do have more questions, to reach All out to your counselor at that point. All of my returning alum, when they've come um, back, so how can you go about paying for the remaining costs? So there are a uh, few different sources that you can look at. So some of you might have a 529 plan or other type of and educational one of savings of plan. Was um, join a campus the way that process activity. is going to work is that um, you are going to be responsible for starting that initial contact with your plan. Um, so you do need to reach out to them um, uh, with the request. Uh, likely your 529 or other savings plan is going to request a statement or a bill from you. Uh, so in mid-August, you're going to receive an e-bill that you can print and send to your plan. Um, so, um, but in the meantime, again, you can reach out to them to ask what their next steps are going to be. Uh, most of the time, your 529 plan will send those funds directly to St. Thomas. Um, so you don't have to be the middleman there. Um, but some might send the funds to you or at least give you the option. 
um, of, uh, to do that. Um, and at that point, uh, then it's your responsibility to then send those funds to St. Thomas. Uh, Bill will talk a little bit more about um, how um, paying yeah, bills work. Uh, but generally, that's how 529 plans will work, is that you reach out to them and they but send the funds the directly to hall. us. Uh, one common question on I get weekends, is, and I wasn't should I use all of my 529 plan in the first and year? Should I save it for all people four years? To make other that's friends, one thing and I, I was better for that. can't really help you with, because we're not financial planners. Encourage your students to expand their social network beyond high school, and again, make new friends. I know a lot of us, you you know, those friends can make you feel safe. They can also be a crutch or a handicap. And, and stop uh, you from so moving exploring on, other, new uh, opportunities. Funding might be an outside so ask your so students, could be something that well, you who did you meet new today? Are you meeting any new people? Again, it's not that like they should drop their old friends, or but like they should be open to um, new opportunities. So oftentimes this next send one is really, really important. As well. Please um, you encourage your student to visit each of their professors during office hours at least once, not only this semester, but the whole time they're at St. Thomas. Professors during office hours are likely to the financial aid office repair when you move in, or you can send them ahead we of time. Really, uh, but you do really want to send those lonely. to the financial aid office so we can get them no one comes to see us. and placed on your No account. one comes to talk to uh, us. Generally, those are That's go our designated to time to be available to students payment. for all kinds uh, of things, help with homework, request, we can split talking about careers, mentoring, um, that sort of thing. Or, um, um, the, and all those rumors um, you've heard about professors that were socially awkward, introverted, they're all true. And then also So your student would be doing us a favor. Well. if they would come talk um, to us. So I'll go over office. the different types of specific um, student loans that are out there. Why I but say that, at Thomas, you know, is also uh, about, again, this opportunity a, to develop a mentoring relationship a with the professor. Or home equity, We're not just uh, the people who impart knowledge college. in the classroom. Um, sometimes we can, can also open up opportunities. We can recommend uh, students. We can talk to them about graduate um, school. We can recommend careers. Um, we can write letters of reference something like uh, for both graduate school, school professional we'll school, or for that first and job. Of that in and we'd bit. like to be able to so do more than just say, I right had families, this student in this class, the these starts, classes, and they earned these grades. Into. And I observe these academic um, abilities. Say, You'd like to be able to talk too, about them as the whole those person. That's be and we can another, do that um, if we've had a mentoring relationship with, with that person. You, and and by the way, employers do read things between the lines. Off. If they see all the professor um, talks about in their, so going in in their letter is what classes the student had and what their grades were, you know, it immediately says, hey, this professor didn't really know that student very well. And that's not going to be as strong of a letter of reference. Now this may still fill it out now seem like a silly not, thing for me to say, but I think it's worth repeating. Excuse me, you can please fill encourage it out the, uh, your student to attend class regularly, even those 8 o'clock, 8.15 classes, and be qualify attentive. For federal loans um, that they're are paying the for it. You're paying for it. So and if you skip a class, you're missing out. They're missing out. It's hard to keep up with the material. It's hard to understand what's going on. And again, it prevents you from developing that serious mentoring relationship with the professor. All students qualify for the same amount of total uh, federal loans. Please in encourage your student so to read class documents carefully and ask questions. Professors, we'd uh, like percent. to have a syllabus. Um, so that's going to Every be syllabus is unique. Start, uh, some things that are okay in some uh, professors' for college, classes aren't um, okay in others. For example, I teach a social um, science so statistics class for sociology well and criminal justice one, majors. Plus I encourage my um, students so to do their homework together. The homework is practice for the exam. Students that are successful at doing the homework should perform well um, enough on so the exam. Fee, what that Other means classes is the they don't that want their the students doing so homework you, with, so with others in the class. Now, a syllabus will spell those request. kinds of things um, out, so, so encourage your student to read them carefully. Coach your student um, to approach so, pe professors uh, with questions early and is that often. It does have high fees, um, I was speaking um, to a father a couple of weeks ago who was expressing some concerns about a course his son took last fall. And you might ask yourself, so why and that is wasn't in your initial calling plan for you in June year? to ask about a course um, a that, is something that his you son took last fall? Quickly, Good um, question. To for me, the better question be is, uh, than, why did the son wait until November 16th, um, which last year was the so last date you could is, drop is a, a class um, with a W or withdraw? Why was that the first day he went to his professor and said, is there anything I can do to improve my grade? 
Uh, At that point, the semester is almost over. It would have been far uh, better for that to uh, student to have approached his professor that, uh, when that first exam was handed back and said, gee, I'm not doing so well. Do you have any advice well? for me? Um, parents yeah, you know, are sometimes it's about study skills. Loan, sometimes so it's about coming to office hours and asking questions. You know, there's lots of advice that professors can give, and we're happy to assist when we do need our students to be proactive. Take advantage of students. Student support services. Six we have lots of them. Uh, uh, academic counseling. We have the um, we have the our, um, our our counseling office for uh, for students as well. There's time. there's lots of student support um, services. So, uh, Disability other, student uh, services would be another one of them. Of that, Again, um, you're paying for them. You're there for a reason. If, you're, is a if this is a, a fit for your student, so your student needs these services. Please encourage them to take advantage of them. Take advantage of academic assistance services. We have a math resource center. A writing um, center. Actually going to apply many, many of our departments offer office. tutors, peer tutors uh, for students for in classes. So theology has tutors for the theology 101. Philosophy uh, has then, tutors uh, for their human person cases, course and their the ethics course. With, um, there uh, the math department uh, has tutors as part of the math resource well. center. So, so again, these are services that you're paying for. Encourage your student to take advantage of them. Um, but this can take a little bit longer. Please so encourage your student to try to, to resolve so it their problems that you first. Make sure you're doing plenty of Again, on. when my uh, youngest daughter was in college, and I'm the, the parent of three college um, graduates, and you know, the youngest one is, uh, we'll for me, was the hardest. Lender, you know, it's hard um, to um, sometimes let go of that role. Loans. And she, um, all of my kids called me from time to time about issues they were having with classes or professors. And my daughter would call and vent, and I would listen, and I would give her advice on, you know, how to handle it. Professor myself, I had a little insight uh, in maybe the start, way her professor would like list, to be so approached and so forth. That are not on that list there was well. one Those occasion, and I will admit to this, that I was really, really, really tempted to, to pick up the phone and call uh, that so professor and say, why are you torturing my daughter? College, again, use or I probably would have sent the email because, um, again, I'm one of those professors who's a little socially awkward. I didn't do it. What I did instead was, again, I coached her on how, what to, you know, what to say to her professor. And I also pointed out to her the way that benefit. she was contributing um, to the problem that she was another describing. Tip that we do so what happened is that she like said, took my advice, she went to that professor, typically the same she talked about the ways that, you know, semester. where she had uh, um, made so mistakes and she explained, gave him more of the context of the situation. And I'm happy to say that she ended up with a higher grade than she thought she even deserved. Now, I don't guarantee that outcome necessarily. But it worked, and what was nice about that is she stumbled um, a little bit, charges, I gave some advice, she fixed the problem, uh, and that, and that up, gave her some uh, confidence, uh, some confidence now well. that she's uh, in uh, her mid-20s sure and she has a full-time career, a, a good um, job, so and, and she you know, has to deal with and things like in her earlier, in employment, uh, and again, she'll call me from time to time and vent to me, and I'll offer advice, and then she goes ahead and solves her problem. She called me last week and said, I just rear-ended somebody, now it wasn't quite with that tone of excitement. Uh, um, and then she said, and this Thomas next sentence floors me, she said, it was a really good learning opportunity for me. Smaller percentage of, um, of jobs on campus and I thought to myself, good because you're not on my insurance. Federal work study funds from the FAFSA. So the again, it's hard to watch our students so fall flat on their campus, face. It's even hard to watch campus. them stumble. Um, but they're, they're resilient, so they're better they for it. If we give them an award, opportunity to uh, to try so to solve to some things so first on their own. Now, that doesn't mean you never you should intervene. Sometimes you absolutely should. And when you do feel like your intervention is necessary, if you need to talk to a professor or another administrator, I just want to let you know that there are there is there are some some. We don't Legal protections you that your student you has, and so you've probably heard of the acronym FERPA, which stands jobs, for a Family Educational can, uh, Rights Privacy Act. And what that really means is that a professor really uh, isn't supposed to talk to you about your student's grades or issues in the classroom a good place without a waiver is, um, signed by your student. Jobs page, uh, most uh, students are happy to get those waivers signed by them and submit them on behalf of their parents when the parent makes that request. And so just know that that's a document that we have to have before we're able to talk with you. That you about issues that go on in the classroom. I know that sounds like strange because, right, you're paying for it, right? I'm sure well, paying campus, for this. Why can't I just look at my daughter's grades? Like well, what I did instead was I said, you know, log on and show them to me. Um, so, so it's not that I wasn't that nosy parent from time to time. 
But I did know uh, that I, I shouldn't be calling um, professors without some kind of a proof of waiver. So self, any faculty um, member, administrator your, knows where uh, that form is and can guide you uh, your complete. student in getting that form um, so to you is, uh, and then getting um, it back so that we can have a conversation if needed. Um, the last thing I want to say for is for college um, expenses, um, it can help you uh, manage your personal way, your students uh, travel finances home in a way. while you're in college, and then plan for after college. Coursework. It has a scholarship One of the most common complaints well. I get at the end of November um, so is professors of, coming uh, to me really and saying, you know, my students so have scheduled that, uh, their flight um, home, and uh, now they can't take their final exam at the appropriate exam time, and I've got 15 students making this request. What should I do? Final exam schedules are posted on the university website, and the schedule for fall 2017 17 should hopefully be posted shortly, certainly before the, uh, really the, 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 the uh, beginning of the semester. So please encourage your student uh, to check that schedule and communicate with you about when they actually are free are from their academic so again, we'll, uh, obligations uh, before coming home for the holidays. We'll try to Thank give you, you some time for your indulgence. At this time, I'm going to introduce our Director of Academic Counseling, Susan Anderson. Good morning, everyone. Hear me okay? Good, good. Uh, Good morning, like, everyone. Uh, Neil said, my, my name is Bill Susan. Peterson. I'm from the business office. I work in academic office. counseling and support. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we do the billing here at St. Thomas. have registered your student for fall semester right. classes. Okay. And so for many uh, of us and for all, all of us in our department, orientation is, is we plan all year long for an these days. Notification and when you're here with us, we love it. This is the heart and soul of what we do. We love working with first so year students, means, and so I welcome you very warmly. So, what this means is we do not send any paper bills in the mail, so don't expect to see anything support. coming in the next My month. My purpose month here in the few moments I have is to help you now feel we well informed about the enrollment process for fall semester. Now, we understand obviously parents may be taking a high responsibility and help finance the tuition. So, if that's the case, please set up your mom and dad or grandparent, whoever that may be. As an authorized user on the student account, that gives you access to the e-bill system. 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 That gives you access to the e-bill Students also will allows be meeting with an academic counselor or faculty advisor or this afternoon. The there will be an individual consultation now, I know as Neil part of the afternoon, proxy, which and is I want to say that we have intentionally separated um, students and parents, and parents for that consultation. You know, per department. And it's not now, because we don't care office. what you think. You in fact, we care very much what you think. We know you know your student very well, and you have lots of great information. All the themes that you've heard this morning, engagement and owning one's education, your parents is up as an author so important and, and today is orientation and so it's a very now, what practical you're do way is basically we really believe to log give our Murphy students online. some practice in steering this morning are familiar the with that car or heard of that? using the analogy Dr. Okay, Walter good. Had. Well, basically, and so that's your main portal. So you know, you'll become that very might familiar cause some with that when you're for some here of school. our students. You're going to log into Murphy but for others and one of the main options is e-bill e-pay and it might be a little produce a little anxiety for you as well. So I just want to let you know you what, will what has happened prior to today up there, and you have, what will happen uh, today and, user on the top and so right. forth. And Prior that is basically to today, where you click if you want to add an authorized user. Us. We've communicated basically, with students. Click there, um, add an we've email had them address, take click placement submit. exams if that was necessary. Not everybody so that's had a nice to do thing. that, but we personalized that By if we needed more information user, about a student's background in a certain subject area. You would then get an email shortly after that saying you're now set as an authorized user. We've also asked them to read a publication that we have that's online. It's still available. It will be available all year at www.sttomas.edu backslash guide. And going forward, you would get the e-bill notification just like um, your but it's now. nice to go back and reference Another that. Another thing I want to kind of highlight up here as well is e-refund. It's excerpts I'm touch of our undergraduate on that catalog that is most relevant for minutes. first year students. That's any time of credit balance and other things. We'd like an so, e-refund um, that, profile that can be set up. Very helpful. And that's also done on a billing. The other test. thing we've had them do and, uh, is fill out an well online e questionnaire that we call the online course preference form. Another minute or so. So this is a way that we gather lots of detailed information about every incoming student. That's where you click to view that for that current month or previous month prior to that year. if you needed to. I think it goes back and we ask them really important questions things like what that. what academic majors are you most now, interested in are some be have automatically a really strong idea about what that is payment others not so much uh, it's so all okay you can see and here for fall semester for is, two is days to September 19th work with every through December 19th um, kind of spring, wherever students are at in that, that decision making February, process uh, and we also want to know things like are you interested in anything that affects the fall logistics are they interested in being of, of on August. an athletic team? And then, in a uh, once again, ensemble. in at late Are they participating January, in an ROTC program? 
things like now, that. Now, if you do take a J term so class, that's going that to be filled out in December in this online and due in full in January. So just keep in mind button. of that. Our and I do suggest students to communicate with your parents if you do plan to take a J term class. Our counselors like pour Neil mentioned, over that information. Sometimes that leads to a miscommunication. Um, because um, of the range an unexpected bill of what that students bring to us, some bring so lots and lots of credits. Some don't bring any credits. It's all good. Um, um, we have don't limited want to pay um, through course this sections by available all means, that's fine. Um, if you for have the ability our first to pay students. Pulled by the first we have done an initial registration for financing students set up based or on what they told plan. us they're interested by all in means, you can pay that and up um, the things that are important that's okay. to them in terms of However, we do see a lot of families that use that. If you do choose and to pay for this semester, there is the, a finance um, charge assessed counseling of 1.1% each month. The counseling session is to talk over that schedule. This isn't meant to penalize anybody. It's basically the cost for extending the credit. Is we're allowing you to pay that over. I want to let you know. In addition to, so um, just keep in mind that we do have that. And so when you do log into the billing site, you would see that on the we left hand side. In case you forget that, that we here this really morning, since you get a lot of information, some it would be there on the left hand student. side. Just so, reminding you um, that if you do range of time choose frames to that spread it out over the semester, there is that. We don't want some charge. students to have all the advantage of kind of the prime. Like I mentioned before, if you want to see the e statement, and you click there, basically in a month from now, when you see the first bill, it's going to look very much like this. Have students you're see any really all the tuition you can see along with room and board build out. So all to say, right below that you're um, going to see current students will payments. Have That's classes basically they need any to USP award or scholarship. They may not have their any first federal grant you may have. Those will show apply to the account that they already that in August. Most interesting to Prior them to in that, terms of core curriculum they'll already be applied to your account essentially at that point. And they may um, get their um, some, below some that you're going to see pending financial Second or third choices. That's any federal loan you may have, parent loan or private loan. I wanted to share. Some show is pending. They're not going to disperse of, until uh, right before the due date, schedules. usually right around and September this is 15th all, These or are so. available in the orientation um, and registration guide. Reason for that, basically, the so interest clock starts in those loans as students soon as Students will get a printed so packet like to today. That's right one thing the they'll walk away with after that. they talk to a counselor. Also, um, and um, basically, students have that first and 10 we'll days of class and add drop. Just to so read over like to once have the students uh, in class at least they've concluded that consultation and after they go home. Since and a lot if of the that schedules are also available to view online through our Murphy um, online system so as yeah, well after it's, today. It's a nice option to so have here. Here's um, some, uh, but if a sample schedule. It's very common for students to have bill, four classes or okay, 16 credits. But I would suggest contacting our classes financial are four aid each. to see if there's this anything that who might students uh, may tell need us to I'm interested uh, in a business related now major. All students you're going to need to complete the master promissory note for an entrance loan counseling along as well as accept your award. So declare. that is always required um, in the, the first time around here. So you want to make sure you that have that, that in so that it shows pending or that you have your financing in, in place in a business to disperse so prior to our counselors know things like that, and we will um, and like help I said, students in any time a credit balance goes back to the student or family here. We want to sit I want to take a moment and just talk about our, our science schedules. We have um, some, like I, I said, one of the examples for that is on the part of parents registered and students 16 credits. when they come back uh, with a schedule all the financing like this, set up they tell us, I'm interested in a pre-health profession like medicine, out. pharmacy, and dentistry, and decides to drop down or a maybe science credits major like biology or biochemistry. For the semester. Very common for that students to have two science classes, chemistry, biology, usually a calculus course, and then a fourth class in the course. So we want to set up an income profile so we can electronically deposit those funds back into a checking or savings account. And the, uh, the, the fastest, the most efficient we've way is to like get the money back to you. Big eyes and, now, and families, if you don't a lot and is want the money back right away and you'd like us to hold on to it for the semester or even the year, we can um, do that. But you have to fill out a key is, credit it's authorization a form yes. that's through our business and office website. As you've heard already we this can morning, there are lots of resources at St. Thomas. However, at the end of the year, we do refund hundred students all credit that balance have schedules back like to the this. family at the end of the so school year, right around the end the of May or June. So it's the prescribed curriculum, um, not um, only for now our in some science cases, faculty, but uh, for a parent um, plus health loan could programs. generate a and refund there are if resources. that's the case, students then that have the paper this check kind of is schedule cut find each other very quickly. We have we learning communities do, in our STEM majors, uh, paper checks, all these things, and it once really does um, launch them and into the level of rigor that's required. On Fridays then. So, so a way that we would ask to partner with you is when a student comes every other back day. with a schedule like that um, is not, I don't know if you can do that. At the beginning of the semester, all undergraduate like, refunds would like be done right around the end of September. At Thomas. Then after that, during the semester, if any of the credit balance is done, it's done every other day basically. So it's done quickly so you have the funds within a couple days. Many of our students are un now, undecided about their let's say and that's completely payment fine. Uh, fact, due date is part of our work in academic counseling and support. Uh, if you missed a payment, we help students through um, the decision-making process. The, what are the, the options? The next, all kinds of ideas. Um, in that we help case, that would place a hold on the account and consider to them past about due. 
reports um, what their majors are all about and what alumni um, are doing and, and giving things access like that. For your official transcripts um, so and also we can, uh, your students can get a start in our core curriculum. Which is your ID card, which I will um, talk about here in a second. All of these courses meet core requirements. Now, obviously, if it's just a matter of, regardless of overlooking of the, the bill, that they would eventually you usually just declare. make a payment and online. The, way, the system updates uh, over major overnight declaration in the and the holds would be released if it's paid current. So. Otherwise, we do understand that there may be there are a, few a little bump in the road. Maybe there was a job loss or classes. unexpected medical bill, whatever that, that may be. But some do. If that's and the so case, if a please reach told out us to they us were interested in journalism that gives us or more time to work with you if you for need example, to. The communication and journalism uh, department offers an introductory class. And so if there was a seat available in that, that course and the student told us they Otherwise were interested in that major, that would be a likely enrollment. Otherwise, you can contact me in the business office and we can look at extending the payment plan a little. But we don't have a lot of time to work with. Um, students All basically right. at the middle so there'll um, be a conversation semester, this afternoon. They'll walk away with their schedule. We will make tweaks as we're able to. There's so, some, uh, if someone um, tells us, you know, when I filled out the, the form, I was interested right in X, Y, or Z, and now I've changed my mind, so we want to hear that, of course, and make November, appropriate changes. Early registration. There's so some changes we're not able to make if someone just doesn't like the morning slot, for example. Um, so if you do have any issues, just please reach out to us. We're here to switch things around we're for personal help you out as preferences much as we can. in that yeah, way. The earlier reach and out, the more time it gives us this will be the only time that a schedule is actually created in the initial uh, stages for St. students. St. Thomas offers a tuition refund program. We talk about owning it and all of these things. Um, and part of the fun in college plan, is to pick your own classes. Uh, administered by and AWG um, Duar. Now, students come to us uh, to with such a range. And we've just found that starting out this way really serves them best. And the we will start as early as October to start coaching them to do it all on their own beginning for J -term, term and spring semester enrollment. This enrollment so is option, optional, optional, so you don't that. need to do that if you don't want. After However, today, if you like that, me, I think of all the best questions on the drive home basically or covers once I'm home, and um, we welcome all questions from students and parents um, after today if you have them. This and, um, uh, is a nice a option to, to have. Waldner's I would comments. strongly consider if you families to just think about it here prior to the start of the year. Without them involved in the um, conversation, given the there will be very little that we can do legally to make any changes or to do thing. anything. You never um, know what can so happen, obviously. An example I give that I like very much you know, is living here in Minnesota, um, earlier this summer, mono, I answered the phone and one of our incoming an students was filling up the course preference form and she she and said, I need have to some questions, and, and I said, that's great, and she said, my dad's on the other semester. line. And I Having said, this option good. And so really she asked thing. her questions, and, like I said, and then before we concluded so that, her dad said, I've got a couple more questions before we conclude. Between the three of us, we got everything um, like said, that we needed to take care of done. And I hung up the phone, and I thought, that father really gave his daughter such a great way to practice that kind of call. And that kind of um, in class, conversation that's um, new. We well, just know basically that you have the first 10 days before, add drop period, and it is awkward at first. And if you that could frame, kind of help then steer it's it that in. way, but allow the, your so students have, maybe to lead the conversation, go to 80%, that is the way that we would welcome your participation money back after today. Or reimbursement towards that particular class. So with that, um, obviously uh, the further I think we have get time for about three questions class, as a group, you Dr. May Waldner may and I will be available outside back. of Wolf Hall so after mind, so this time if you have you're halfway through the semester and you're just not enjoying well. it any longer or your best friend's not we'll in open it. Open it up for questions. You still may be responsible for that. And we strictly adhere to that, that tuition refund schedule. So when you go online to drop a class, that schedule is there to see. So just keep in mind of, of that. Uh, and, and lastly, here before I hand it off to Steve Griffin and the bookstore. So the question is, if a student a has, has, has brought in a significant enough number card. of credits, does this that give an advantage or a higher um, priority? One card and the answer is yes. We give you um, access to your dorm. Our, our registration your meal plan times plus your flex um, dollars as well number on there. of credits completed. Uh, laundry and then there gives you a access bit of a rotation gym, within that to create some equity. several with, functions for you. Within that, but yes. Uh, what it can also do is act as like a prepaid debit card for you. Um, in which you could load funds onto that account to use anywhere on campus. Um, and even uh, some off-campus vendors as well, is, like Bonnie's or Chipotle. The question is, is a foreign language required for all, in, a dozen for all places incoming in students? The it's a, it's a graduation requirement. So many uh, first-year nice students have, start so you don't their have languages in the credit first cards semester. Around or cash. There's kind of, the, we offer um, a, a placement like said, exam, so some can if you're test, on campus, you can and use we just see where they're food, at. And many start that in the spring or after, depending on their placement. Whatever it may be. Talk about that The difference between this and your meal plan is basically your meal plan is semester to semester only. And that's just your meals with your flex dollars, and that's food only. Express is everything. Now, it's all on one card, so I just want you to keep in mind of that. 
And obviously, two, equity, two, two I'll ways take you can that add question. those funds um, to your account. You can go online, uh, and just prepay. I would say that, um, that one of the problems we have is that we have more bonus. demand as for J-Term than there is uh, seats in classrooms. Books. I'm working Maybe with uh, Dean Williams to you get try to provide more opportunities then. for first-year um, students in J-Term. I want to point out that the student that doesn't need to take a class Otherwise, every J-Term. The way that our graduation requirements are set up, a student would need to take one J-Term or a class in the summer to graduate on time. We are and trying that, to provide more book, opportunities for J-Term classes. J-Term is also a time when um, we offer uh, like some of our study abroad courses that meet over J-Term. So we have, for example, a Theology 101 in Rome. We have a um, Art History mind. course in now London. That's so J-Term is often used by here. students for study um, abroad. I'm going to pass you over to Steve, and he's just going to go over a little bit about how you purchase books. Thank you. There is an application process. Um, I think that students that are further along would probably have priority, but if the receipt's open, um, that is a possibility. Um, since I've got 30 seconds, I want to make a shameless plug for something I forgot to mention in the first talk, and this would be about a study abroad opportunity for sophomores. So your student next fall could take four classes so that count towards the core curriculum at our Bernardi campus in Rome for the same cost as it would cost to take four courses here. And we throw in a $2,000 fellowship to cover the cost of travel. So if any of you are interested in that for next year, come find me during the uh, information fair around noon today and I can tell you more about it. Um, as they go through their semester. And of course we have the books or the course materials. The course materials we do carry um, a variety, um, new use, rental, um, digital and a bunch of other options that are out there that professors are starting to use now to help to keep the cost down for your students. One area I'm interested in the fall semester in Rome, but I don't think I'm going to be able to swing it. So uh, thank you, Dr. Waldner and Susan. And we have some, uh, some of my colleagues are joining us, joining me on stage. There's and one more. Um, um, Jesse Langer should be coming. Cost, but also some from our books that the two students rent. Uh, You're able to write in them, okay. highlight them, use them like a normal. And book, I'm gonna, I'm gonna begin. Oh, and Jesse just cost. walked in, so everybody's here. What we ask for is those books are you know, we can resell them, obviously. If the dog got a hold of it, or they fell in a bucket of water, or coffee got spilled on it, those kind of things, you know, those books are kind of yours um, uh, for those things. But if the books come back to us. We're pretty um, lenient on what we tell them to take back because we're able to sell those books again. Um, what it works is, um, too, for the books, if you do have to bring them back or you're able to be able to keep them or you don't want to turn them back to us, you know, we just charge you the difference in the price of the books, and then we do have a little service charge on top of that. So we truly make renting from us very, very easy because you do return them back to us in a, at our buyback time also. And when you buy the books online, you get a couple different options. One, you can come to the store and buy the books, um, like, like I said before. Early August is usually when most of our books are in. Um, the prices are pretty much set, and we have lots of rental partners in. But also, you could do FedEx if you want to send to your house. That's no problem. The other thing we have, too, is called the reservation. Um, it's online reservation. What you do is you, pick, you select your books on there, and when you get to the point you're checking out, you just basically say res reserved. For a small fee, we'll actually take those books, put them in a box, and set them in a separate room. So when your students come and move in, they really just have to walk to the store, pick up their box, and go to their, they go to their dorm room. So it really it, it, it saves a lot of time. You do not have to wait in the line um, that um, the first week of school that um, the students that have. And also, you kind of get first dibs on some of the used books, too, because you're buying those first before the students all get here um, when, school's when school opens. Um, looking at, like I said before, the best side to buy is in early August because we have a lot of prices. We do a lot of comparison prices with them. We also get a lot of rental partners at that time also. Um, so it's just kind of a snapshot of what we give for the campus stores and what we're able to offer for your students and yourself. Please stop by um, our info table too. You can pick up one of these folders. It gives a lot of services that we offer um, at the campus stores for your students. And also you're able to sign up for, um, hopefully may register to win a free semester of books also. So you can stop by our table and we have that all there. And we're also available for questions um, at that time too as well. Otherwise, Josh, we have time for questions? Okay, so if, if anybody has any questions, we have time for two questions right now, so. Ma'am? Um, yeah, J-Term is separate, so that's going to be billed out 
Correct. You just pay for the fall semester, and then yeah, you'll like I said, J term will bill out at the end of December, um, due on January. Okay. okay. Where was it? Back. I didn't feel. Uh, yes, yeah, for, um, starting this summer here, there was reduced price, there is reduced price, it's half price for summer classes. Uh, no, J term is, is still considered the same as, uh, same cost as a normal semester long class, it's just much more uh, intense or uh, condensed, I guess I should say. Uh, so that's normal cost, but summer is half price. Um, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, it should still stay that way, yep. Uh, well, I think that, that's it. Thank you for uh, sitting through this information this morning. <laughs>